Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Booksaw Talk Show. Today is 2019, November 7th, 12 o'clock, 14 minutes, San Francisco time. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning, cool for school. So what is CMS? Content Management Systems. Uh, content Management Systems. Okay, so but what, what about that? So uh, that on that topic, Content Management Systems, I'm going to talk about my Emacs setup, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, uh, you know, unless you have something specific in mind. So tell us spot and uh, discord let's go to discord okay so so start talk show today we're gonna start let me show you this window okay so let me show you this fantastic start start log mod okay so mx start command log mod in this window you will see all my Emacs commands for you Emacs users. Good morning, Liam. Good morning, Alan. Uh, so alive yesterday, someone said you should talk about content management systems versus self self made. Uh, someone did, but I don't remember what is the question though. I mean, like. Um, Okay, I can, I can I can tell you something about it, but um, uh, but German, but German strophobe, this guy, <laughs> this guy is a voodoo. This is straw, but but John, but John Strostrop, the C plus plus inventor, a voodoo, a reasonable voodoo. C plus plus, the worst language on earth. The, a virus. Let's go see him. So if no topic, I'm gonna just talk about random. I have lots of things on my blog I can talk about. I'm going to talk about. So this is uh, <laughs> this this guy is a voodoo. Is he's actually quite reasonable when I see him talk. You know, unlike for example. Uh, as far as personality goes, personality goes among the programming language creators. I think he's more reasonable than, for example, than the Larry Wall, who created Perl, and Guido von Rossum, who created Python. You know, those are like uh, empty. There's nothing. Python. Guido von Rossum. His opinions. His opinions is nothing. Nothingness. <laughs> Guido von Rosam. And the Pearl guy, Larry Wall, is a crackpot, de facto crackpot. And <laughs> but Jean Strostrov, he's a reasonable voodoo. You know, at least he's reasonable. But he's, uh, uh, you know, I can tell you the reasons. I have to give you my reasons because, uh, because. You know, because if I claim this, you know, this this idol, you know, this 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 guy is a programmer's idol. You know, people idolize him. Oh, he's a genius. He's the greatest genius. <laughs> genius, genius, my ass. This guy, C plus plus, the worst language on earth. Okay, so let's see. Beautiful people. Hello, beautiful people. Uh, agree with their. I agree with this. Okay, so yesterday someone said you should talk about CMS versus self self-made. Okay, CMS versus self-made. Okay, let's let's prepare saw talk show. Okay, magnify today's date uh, and the saw new page. Create a new HTML page. Linkify cut paste it here. Delete that. Then go to the page, show in browser. This you see, so this is new. Magnify. Uh, but before we do anything, let's go to yesterday. So yesterday, someone said CMS. So let's search for CMS. 
Okay, he, here. Panels A said CMS, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, the jungle CMS, Guav versus handcraft, handcrafted, handcrafted website. Okay. Uh, panels, are you here? Uh, panels, panels not here. Okay, so that topic. Uh, okay, what am I gonna say about that topic? That topic. You know, it, it like usually a topic, a blank topic like, um, you know, see uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, the Django. You know, I've never used any of them. Well, I do have a WordPress account. I just used it for 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't think, I'm not sure I still remember the account. I, yeah, long time ago, 15 years ago or something. I might have one account, but you know, WordPress, Blogger, Joomla. What 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 is Joomla? Let's see. So search. Wait. Uh, okay. Search. I don't have a thing about these topics, but well, I can tell you my opinions about this topic. But so Joomla is a free and open source content management system for publishing web content developed by open source blah, blah, blah. it is built on a model model view controller my ass framework that can be used independently of the cms okay what whatever so what is it it's just a blogger right you just go to a website you blog it's a free and open source content management system yeah so you know that word has many means so so it's just a website you go to and post things right or is it a, you know, so the, the content management system, the, the, the meaning has kind of diluted, I think. So do they mean just a blog website or do they mean like WordPress? You know, WordPress is just, it's just a website. You go there, create an account, you, you can write blogs. Now, on the other hand, there's content management system for basically for creators, for website creators. For example, xali.info. So I can use a content management system, so I generate HTML pages like that. But, so what does he mean, panels A? Drupal, so let's look at Drupal. I don't uh, use any of these. Are you brothers, both of you surname W, Alan W, greetings, Liam. Uh, Alan is from. Uh, Alan is from Sacramento. It, wait. Uh, yeah, right. I think so. And uh, Liam is from. Uh, Liam is from Europe somewhere. Where are you from, Liam? So. Uh, I started watching the Bajam video before this stream. Oh, you did. Okay, so ah, uh, how you know? So he's you know he when he talks, his personality I think he's reasonable. So Liam Liam is from London. Okay, good morning, London. Uh, so now you sense a joke in the screen. Okay, uh, CVS versus self-made. I was, uh, Bajong Strostrop, Strostrop, that's whatever his name. Uh, presentation. It was really boring. I feel I left early. Okay. Uh, haha. He doesn't seem like entertainment. So, how would you define CMS exactly? That's the question. Morning, Troy Fletcher. What qualifies that and what doesn't? Yeah, good question. Now, Troy Fletcher. I must introduce Troy to you guys. He is a do it yourself keyboard creator <laughs> right Troy so Troy created this keyboard uh, let me show you do it yourself uh, and uh, and he's got newer versions but I haven't up keep my website updated Signum so this is uh, Troy's Fletcher's creation, Signum keyboard, uh, and uh, and right, Troy, S say something like <laughs> respond. 
<laughs> okay. So so this keyboard choice creation and there are several versions. Covers keyboard. Uh yes, that's you. So this is uh this is Signum two, then this is Covers keyboard. Uh and I think you do have new new versions, right? Feeling a little uh called out. Okay, <laughs> so uh, TroyFletcher.net. So let's go to, yeah. Let, why don't we just uh, let's start talking about things, you know, ran random topic. So his website. Hold on a second. So he's uh, he, he's got a video here. If you go to if you have JavaScript on, then you can see it. Uh, and you can buy, you can buy his keyboard from his uh, website. The kit, I think. So let's uh, call open in Brave. Hold on a second. Open link in Brave. And uh, uh, let's turn on JavaScript. I don't know if uh, in case you are using JavaScript. Okay, so Twitter, keyboard sales, YouTube, Reddit, writings. Okay, let's say uh, let's let's look at keyboard sales. Let's what let's see what is new. Signum three. Okay, Signum three. You know, one 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 of the thing I find interesting is that is this the big corner key, uh, Troy put there, big corner key. So so you can buy. Uh, oh, hold on a second. So I have let's turn on uh, JavaScript and refresh stupid video. Okay, so there it is. So you have video, and uh, you can buy a kit here. Uh, one thing I find interesting is the big caps, big corner key, so that you can use your palm to press it easily. Does he have a picture like that? Uh, oh, there's a lot on this page. Uh, okay, so there is also board forty. Uh, <laughs> what is this Fletcher five one zero one? This is a standard PC keyboard, encycled from an old and dying keyboard. Okay, what is that about? <laughs> Sold out, <laughs> meticulously cleaned, rebuilt, and painted. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, so. Uh, rebrand an old AT101. Okay. So there is a picture. God, shit. I don't. I should have a picture here because there is a picture. Okay, so I, I know where to find it. So that's his keyboard. Okay, so check it out. And uh, fun keyboards. Okay, let me let me show you this. This one. Corner key. One big ass corner key, fantastic! You put control on that key, so you can just uh, you know use your palm. It's very natural for that. Okay, so that's a that's a good idea. So anyway, so let's go back to CMS. You know, so I don't know what uh, you know. So CMS, there are two things about CMS. One is just like WordPress. You go to a website, you create a blog. You know, like blogger. And then the other is, for example, the content creation system, content management system. I think that's what you guys mean. So Drupal is, according to Wikipedia, is a free and open source content management framework written in PHP and distributed under GNU something something license. Crap. Drupal provides backend framework for at least 2.3 of all websites worldwide. Yeah, because it's PHP. It's not because Drupal. Okay, it's PHP. Pretty home page, the most popular programming language that the elite hacker types despise. PHP and JavaScript. <laughs> the reason they become popular is precisely because these elite hacker nerd types idiots. They don't know how to do things. They don't understand society. So therefore, the programming languages that these elite hacker types love, such as Haskell, Lisp, Clojure, they go nowhere. Scheme, scheme, Lisp. You know they are forever, forever tail recursion on Mars. You know, uh, uh, somewhere, some corner in the universe, they 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 go nowhere. 
Meanwhile, the language is despised by these elite hacker types, such as PHP and JavaScript. They are they became the first, you know, the the most popular language. So anyway, Drupal, ranging from ranging from personal blogs. Okay, so this this is marketing talk, ranging from personal blogs to corporate, political, and government. Shut the fuck up. So systems also use Drupal for knowledge management. Fuck. So what is Drupal? As of as of uh, 2019. The Drupal community comprised more than shit. The standard release of Drupal. So what the, what the fuck is this? Originally written by this guy, Dries uh, Bytert. Dries Bytert. <laughs> Dries, Dries by a pop tart. Bytert as a message board. Drupal became open source project. Okay, so so can anyone answer the question? So is it just the website you go to post blogs, or is it just, is it actually a for programmers? These idiots. Okay. Anyway, I think Drupal is a. Uh, yeah, it's 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 for programmers. You create website for it, content management framework. That's right. So you have Drupal and you have Django. Django is something from Java. What a offensive name, Django. What 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 the fuck that is, Django. And Gua Guav. I don't know what is Guav. Let's look. Oh, so for your sweet, I think. Okay. Oh, I had one of those not very popular. Uh, rebrand. Uh, uh, non programmers and people can add content blogs. So so non programmers Oh, okay. So non-programmers and people can add content blocks. Okay, so it's like a uh, Wikipedia, right? I mean the Wikimedia software, which fuels Wikipedia, right? Okay, so content management system. Well, I mean, so what is my comment? Yeah, Django is in Python, indeed. I know. So content management system. So th you have this graph, which a uh, Apparently, is not very popular. Okay, so there is a Wikipedia page. Let's see Wikipedia Guav. Okay, this uh, logo, nice logo. Well, the concept of the logo is very good, but the implementation is not so good because this astronaut looks like a baby. You know, this looks like a baby in diapers. So Grab is a free software self-hosted content management system written in PHP again, uh, and based on the on the Symfony web framework frame application framework. It it uses a flat file database. Oh, flat file database. That's a, a revival of the classics for for both back end and front end. Grab is designed to have a shallow learning curve and so be easy to set up and so on. Okay. So yeah, this content management system in our context it means like uh, you know a software, a programmer's or system mean install. Then you have a website where people can create web pages, you know things like that. So it's you know like Wiki Wikipedia. So what is my opinion? I don't have much opinion. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a tool. It's useful. Uh, it's a tool. It's useful. Uh, I don't use it. I don't use it for my website because uh, because I you know my website is just personal website you know it's not it's not for you know a lot of people for a team to create content so I don't use it you know it, it, when it comes to creating website there are so many aspects you know for for my website I also have kind of a system you know custom system for creating websites, you know, in Emacs, for example, uh, something. Okay, let's see. Uh, content management system. Let you know. I type something. I want to create a a web a web page of that name. So I just call start new page or custom commands. Okay, hold, hold on a second. So I call start new page. Okay, now it's done. Now I can press enter to open that page. It's there. It's, everything is there. You know, templates, stuff, whatever. Show in browser. You know, it, it's there. And okay, I don't want it anymore. Switch back to Emacs. I want to delete this page. 
press three keys, it's good. Okay, then press one key, that is also good. Okay, so that's uh, you go back here, reopen last open, it says file not found because I deleted it. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's the content management system too. Uh, so, yeah, I don't use it. it, it a content management system is a good tool. But I can, I can tell you the history of the content management system. So the earliest, you know, let, let's go back. So if you trace back to the earliest, you know, one, one earliest we can think of is Wikimedia. Wikimedia is a software that runs Wikipedia, okay? Now, when, P when Wikipedia began in 2002 or so, 2003, you know, they, it's written in PHP. Back then, in th throughout 2000s, every website is written in PHP, okay? 90%, 90% of all websites, or including all the most popular websites, including Facebook, actually, later, later on. It's all written in PHP. Pretty home page. And uh, they, uh, and uh, so one of the early, so, so you have Wikipedia in 2002. Now in 2002, you know, it's written in PHP. They don't have a Wikimedia software yet. You know, basically because when every, every software began, you just have kind of, you know, you don't have, you, you, you may not even have a name. You, you just have a software, you know, you patch and you do whatever. Then after a few years, it becomes more robust, consistent. Then you, it becomes a software, independent software, you know, Wikimedia, you know, then you have, you know, lots of, uh, wait, it's not called Wikimedia. It's called, um, uh, is your website all static pages? Yes, my website is all static pages. Do you have any server side code? No, not zero. Bas yeah, zero, basically. Uh, astronaut might look like baby in diapers, but where are you gonna pee? And, uh, you know, I heard apparently for some time they pee in their pants, astronauts. <laughs> it, it's true. If you look, uh, I, in fact, there's a, a there's a video, YouTube video from astronauts from, you know, from you know uh, NASA or something. You know, they they talk about apparently for a period of time, uh, they just pee. Actually, I mean, they okay. So so there's an invention. Basically, you have a pee bag in your pants, so you pee into it. But however, before that is even invented, there are some cases where the astronaut really needs to go pee. And they, you know, they, they call, uh, hey, Houston, I need to pee. <laughs> I really need to pee. What can I do? Then Houston says, so I mean, the astronaut says, Houston, so, so would it be okay if I pee in my suit? Would that be a problem? Then after a while, all the scientists busy at the station, you know, <laughs> work things out, calculus. And they say, and after a while, they, they go back, uh, uh, you know, you, yeah, you can go ahead, pee in the suit. <laughs> and he just pee in the suit. That actually happened. Uh, so anyway. Okay, so I can I can so let's go back to talk about the history of content management system. So Wikimedia, let's search for Wikimedia. Okay, I um I don't th Wikimedia. Okay, let, let's see um Wikimedia movement. Wikimedia movement or simply Wikimedia is a global community blah blah blah. Uh, what what's the software created? Uh, Wiki, uh, I mean the Emacs, I mean the Wik, uh, Wikipedia, Wiki. Okay, so Wiki. Again, let me talk about Wiki because that's the history of the content management system. So you have Wikimedia. Wait, wait. Let's get the Wikimedia the word correct. You know, so I don't keep using the wrong word. What's the software for? Um, so let's look for. So anyway, so let's look for. Let's open MediaWiki. Okay, wait. 
Ah, uh, fuck these confusing na names. Media Wiki. Okay, yeah. It's, so so it's called Media Wiki. Media Wiki is a free software, open source software, uh, wiki engine. Okay. Uh, so so you have several wiki engines. So so wiki engine, you can consider it consider it as as you know content management system. So here's a wiki a med, uh, media wiki, which is a software that runs Wikipedia. Then you have a list of wiki software. Now, if we look at them, I can tell you do, do they have a list of names? I just want a list of names. I don't want your philosophy. Okay, blah 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 blah. Uh, public enterprise wiki blah blah blah. What whatever. He oh history of wiki. Fuck, it's robbing my job. Okay, yeah, it's uh, okay. It's 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 talking about what I'm going to talk about uh, more or less somewhat. So I can tell you. So you know, I'm gonna tell you my own uh, opinion. You know, so look, look at, look here. In 1998, proponents of extreme programming voodoo. Extreme. If you haven't, if you don't know, extreme programming is what became agile. You call it agile. You don't call it extreme programming anymore. But in 1998, <coughs> extreme programming is extremely popular. You know, it's from there you have the concept of pair programming and all sort of voodoo is you know, is garbage. Why do why do you have where how did extreme programming begin? I mean why why did it become popular? Because it is a mechanism. It's a it's a way, it's a propaganda, it's a mechanism for non-programming managers, non-technical managers, managers who don't know nothing about coding, okay, for them to manage technical, you know, programmers. Because if you are a non-programming manager, you know, I have, you know, we have a project I ask you to do, but you say, you tell me, oh, it cannot be done at this, you know, within a week because this or that, or it cannot be done, or how do I know? Like I don't know, right? So, as a non-programming manager, how do I, you know, it's a, it's kind of I have to trust you. It's kind of a, a issue. So they created extreme programming. So it's a it's a front end. It's a propaganda. It's a method to, so that they have you know they have many concepts. For example, stand up meeting. You know, like this weird you know non-conventional thing and. Uh, filled with uh, tons of jargons. Uh, for example, pair programming. So what's pair programming? So as a manager, I don't know how to code. I don't know nothing. You know, if there's a bug, I don't know if it's a it's a mistake on your part or is it really significant. You know, even great programmers, we have that problem. You know, you as a programmer, you do things. I don't know what you do. <laughs> like, I have no idea. I just manage you. I'm your boss. So when you say, you know, I, I cannot judge your work, that is, I don't, I cannot, I, I, you know, in many, often I'm unable to see, to um, judge whether you are a lazy programmer, you are fucking off, fooling around all the time, or are you are really good. I don't know. You know, some project, it might take one week, but you tell me it takes two, two weeks. So how do, how do I know? Okay, my, my neighbor is, um, Mowing the lawn, very noisy, fucking annoying. Let me close the window. So it's a uh, Thursday. Oh God, it's annoying. It's really annoying. Thursday, you know, that's what, you know, th this is when you wish you have lots of money, you can move to expensive gated community apartments, you know, or you buy a house, then you don't have, you don't have these problems. Okay, so today is, uh, uh, I'm kind of random, random things. Am I doing good? Should we focus on some technical topic or uh, or something? 
So yeah, hello beautiful people. I I think you guys don't hear it much because the microphone it it it, it only captures my mouth, so you don't hear it. But to me, it's very loud. It's like in my ears, and even with the window closed. So history of wiki. So history of the content management system. Let me let me finish talking about that. So we were talking about uh, what what was I saying? What was the um, I forgot what is the thing I'm I was saying. I was like talking a lot about uh okay, so the noise is okay, don't worry about it. So what what's the thing I was like starting to have a rant like <laughs> Okay, so I don't rem remember. So anyway, content management systems wiki. So you have this software and uh uh, what is the thing I'm going to say? So anyway, me media wiki is one of the earliest. Okay, now before wiki, before then you have the term wiki. You know, so media wiki came after the term wiki. Wiki just means oh super chat. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> ching ching. <laughs> so. You were searching for the for oh yeah extreme programming yeah that that is a tangent on the extreme programming so you are a manager a non programmer manager you manage programmers but you don't know what they do you know the programmers can lie you know you can you are unable to judge so what you do is you create okay here so yeah so so you create you create this uh extreme programming thing is that's that's how um. You create this extreme programming. I don't remember where I read it somewhere here. So uh, basically, you create this extreme programming, and uh, I anyway. So you create extreme programming. So you create the concept of pair programming. So you get so programmers, you know, use, usually they work by themselves. So you get two programmers working on the same project essentially you get them to watch each other you know they are programmers they know each other so so it's a, it's like the communism in china the red you know the red gods or the russia you know you get people to report on each other that's the tactic you know so you encourage of course when you say extreme programming or agile you don't actually say that you 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 say the positive aspect you know like oh we should collaborate programming with with uh, we should help each other you know prayer programming allows you to learn learn from you know each other's mistakes <laughs> you know and uh, so that's the extreme programming you encourage so you read of you read of the qualities of you know a great programmer learning stuff you 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 ignore that you emphasize on collaboration help each other you know uh bring out human potential things like that so you so you encourage extreme programming you also encourage like um if there if there's a bug like no you discourage responsibility rather you encourage like one of the things extreme programming or agile say is that you want to um you want to let me show you the article okay start programming uh page uh, programming extreme programming you go to um, you go to hacker code okay so hacker code you'll see agile extreme voodoo diagram you see you see whenever you see a code they, they always have like a whole bunch of jargons almost it's like you can recognize it like for example in unix philosophy you have a bunch of jargons you know then you you know kiss keep it simple stupid small is beautiful dry you know dry programmers you know uh, driveling from their mouth dry like like um do not repeat yourself all these jargons when you see you 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 can kind of always tell when when there's a code for, formation of code, uh, lots of jargons. Unix philosophy is one of the example. The Unix people. So look at this extreme agile programming. You know, uh, so you have pair programming seconds, 
uh, unit test. <laughs> yeah, that's the important part of it. Uh, you know, some of these are good. You know, like of course, these part of it them are based on you know uh, good things. You know, that's all code is like that. You know, you some of, there are some truth to it. So anyway, you see, pair pair negotiation, then stand up meeting, acceptance test, iteration plan, release plan. You know, this fuck. You know, they they create this code like you know they it's like code always have their own philosophy. So this is agile diagram, and uh, you can see some of the uh, famous people on on the on the topic agile and extreme programming. And uh, this is not the only this is not the only voodoo diagram. There are others. Let me show you. Uh, look at this one. Okay, <laughs> look look at this one. <laughs> this is another one. So you agility, agility is you know you you got bunch of circles like yin yang you know like Taoism, and you have visibility, accelerate, accelerate delivery, you know agility is strategy, release, iteration, daily, continuous, then come out working software. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have visibility and values, adaptability, transparency, simplicity, unity. Uh, you know, then you have vision goals, charter. You know, this fuck. This 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 is what uh, you know. Agile, agile, agile is the you know the 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 next generation. It's e evolved from extreme programming. Pair programming, so they, they all came from extreme programming. Okay, that's the root. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why. For some reason, extreme programming, the term kind of went away. Then it became agile. Probably because agile is more like code-like, you know. Because agile can, you know, usually code-like jargons, they can mean many things. Like they can mean many things. You know, each person we can take it differently. So you have agile. Meanwhile, extreme programming is kind of um, you know, maybe the term is not very suitable because, you know, it's like extreme sports, you know, it's like you just do coding, go crazy, you know, so maybe that doesn't, uh, it's not suitable for marketing. So, so the agile, agile is more suitable for, for marketing. So maybe that's why they become agile software. So I have collected a bunch of people who criticize you know the extreme programming you know especially this guy programming motherfucker okay so he's got <laughs> he's got you probably you guys have seen this site right this is very famous uh, wait did he it used to have bunch you know it used to have these graphics did he remove that? Let's go to manifesto. Oh, he removed that. What the? This this Z show guy. He's a great programmer, but he's also he's a pretty weird. Uh, but I like him. Uh, okay, so maybe it's this side. Or buy a T-shirt, asshole. He he removed. Wait, why why is this all not loading? Because of JavaScript. Let's turn on JavaScript then. Script blocked. No. Okay, refresh. His website is dead. What the? You know because the fun part is that you see this black guy with a gun from the movie display mature content yes you idiot fuck fuck the social justice display uh okay so let's let's turn on javascript maybe so that's about extreme programming there's a lot to say you know i can talk about that uh for a ten it's gone. Uh, his uh, website, you know, you don't see what what's going on. Oh, there it is. Okay, that that looks familiar. Programming motherfucker, do you speak it? Now he changed. Now you see, you see this shirt. 
by the way, this is not the original. Or the original one is from the Pope Fiction. Okay, so let's look at let's let me show you the Pope Fiction thing. So you need to turn on JavaScript, then you need to copy the word, then you need to close it, open a new one, search it again because of the idiocy of DuckDuckGo. Then now you can click on images. There it is. So originally, it's, he's got this guy who is about to pop the guy, this black guy. <laughs> you know, it's, it, became, it has become a meme. Okay, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to find a picture where he pointed a gun. It's like that. So, originally, it's, it's like a picture like that. So, apparently, I, was, I suppose for copyright reasons, he changed. So, it's, you know, it's, so it looks similar, but it's not that picture anymore. But, the, but now, his website, you don't even see the picture anymore. For some reason, I don't know why. Maybe because, um, yeah. And and you have these broken images. I don't know what's going on with he, him. He's got. By the way, he's on Twitter. So this guy is a great programmer. This uh, Z Show, Z Show. He's um, you know he swear a lot, and he re has written very popular web server in Ruby community or was it Python? Hmm? Alan says the hacker code philosophy is, ma is married with pop psychology. We have overlap in how they talk about people society systems with voodoo terms and dogma. I see Chum and Long be uh, beatable hours. What I see is Chum, Chum and Long beatable hours. <laughs> what does? What do you mean? So hello, beautiful people. I'm your boss. I do not know what you are doing. I just manage you. Yes. So that's the extreme program. So in my opinion, okay. I. So I mean, it's hard to say exactly because the social issues. There's no, you know like the answer it's not a math question so in, but in my opinion that's the that's the whole thing about extreme programming and agile that's why they become popular it's basically it's 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 a you know it's a social movement so that the managers and also corporations because like you know like google facebook corporations they get control so they have control over the programmers you know so 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 you programmers becomes a it becomes a school, you know, you, you know, they can unscrew you anytime, kick you out, replace you, you know, it's like, uh, you become nothing. That that's, that's what extreme programming and agile is doing, you know, they, they focus on, you know, they elaborate, you know, co collaboration, basically, they get you to watch each other's work. And also, they remove responsibility. So, like before, when if you are a programmer, if I'm is responsible for this project, I create it. If it sells, it's great. I should get a raise, or you know, I, I, you know, I, we, I will be greatly, you know, because the, the money made by company came from me basically. I'm the guy who created created this software. And if there's a problem, then I'm also responsible because you know because. There's a bug, major bug or something. I'm responsible for it. That's normally th how things are and how things should be. You know, responsibility. And if you are good, you get rewarded for it. You know, if you are no good, you don't get reward. You know, if you create lousy software, that that's you know you don't you you get kicked out or or you know you don't get reward. You don't get a raise. Things like that. But that's but the the but but the this. Agile and and extreme programming, they are trying to change that. They don't want that because because they cannot control. Instead, they want they they want to create this uh, concept, which is a lot of today's social justice people are doing. You know, they thanks to agile and extreme programming, they want to create a system such that 
in individuality, the person is no longer important. You, you know, you as a person is not not important to them. The corporation, the system is important. You know, so so you you become just a cocking a wheel. You know, you get you are re they want to make you to be they want to make programmers to be replaceable. So they focus on this you know social collaboration kind of scheme or, or of all things, and they. Uh, for example, what happens if, if there's a bug? Okay, so before, when there's a bug, who, who created the bug? Which fuckhead? Which lazy programmer? Which, you know, idiot created this bug? He will be responsible. He will be fired. That is normal. Okay, that's responsibility. But the Agile doesn't do that. They, 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 you know, they, they want to fire whenever they want. They don't like you. They, they want to create. So, so when, when there's a bug in the agile community, when, when in the agile way of thinking is that, okay, anyone should fix it right away. Like, like they have a, you know, they have one of their dogma. Like, do not, like, when there's a bug, you should go fix it right away. Do not, you know, focus on who, you know, who created the problem. You know, so, so it's like. You sh you know they they don't focus on the person you know whoever who you know who did wrong or who did good they don't care they want to have like everyone is is the same every everyone is the same when, when there's a bug the team you know fix just you you should just fix it that's uh you know that's the agile and extreme programming fuckheads and uh and and they become big they become why why do they become big you know, so partly because of the management, the corporation, you know, it's good for the corporations, you know, because that way they can, so programmers become something they can easily replace, you know, like unimportant. They want to create this, you know, thinking to spread this thinking. So, so to even to, so when it becomes successful, so it becomes such that even for average programmers, they will believe in, you know, this agile extreme programming kind of thinking just like open source open source you know when when you see someone who is not uh pro open source you fuck you fuck him right you you <laughs> you do all you can to you know to to fuck him that's what that's you guys open source in the same way that's an extreme programming it, it you create this massive you know basically brainwashing propaganda social engineering okay which is similar uh in my opinion similar to the uh, concept of democracy of USA, okay, <laughs> you know, like nobody even know what it means anymore. You just say democracy, and uh, you can attack any country you don't like. So that's so that's my opinion about extreme programming. So um, and back to content management, back to the history of wiki. Okay, so the history of wiki. So you have wiki, wiki uh, media wiki. Then before that you have you have what's called FAQ Omatic. Okay, let me show you. I don't know if they still have a entry in Wikipedia. Uh, I think if I I don't remember for sure, but I th I think they had a entry in Wikipedia at least in, in the early days. It's called FAQ Omatic. Okay, let me copy it and paste it here. Uh, so where are we? So what's this page? So back to close that. So go to Kassad, today's Kassad Talk Show uh, and uh, paste wik, uh, Wikipedia Omatic. Okay, that's the thing. And uh, let's, let's paste um, programming blog close. Go back to here. What is this? Is math important for programmers? Okay, yeah, it's about extreme programming. So let's paste that. That's the things we talked about. Um, and uh, yeah, the history of wiki. So so before wiki, where, like where does the wiki concept came from? It came from FAQ Omatic. Okay, let me show you what that that is. So FAQ Omatic. So this is the history of. Um, I'm trying to find a Wikipedia page of it. Let's see if we can still find that. 
this is very old you know this is like 2002 I I think I remember there was a Wikipedia page maybe if you read their um, wiki history then you might find it let's see history of wiki let's search for FAQ uh, wiki FAQ they don't have it nah. so this is bad history incomplete uh, wiki, you know, FAQ Omatic is the. Now, we are talking about the history of wiki software, okay, not the wiki concept, uh, but the wiki software. Uh, wiki, wiki web, okay, so wiki, wiki, whatever. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll find the word FAQ Omatic in. Um, in Wikipedia somewhere okay so let's say FAQ uh, manual FAQ so it's not here so anyway there is this thing called FAQ Omatic which is you know it's it's just a cruise Omatic what the oh and uh, FAQ Omatic so let's see so this is back in year 2000, okay, year 1991, 2000, FAQomatic.net. Nah, that's something else. Yeah, I think it's something else. But anyway, let me tell you what it is. FAQomatic, basically, it's a software. It's like one file, single file, or Perl. Uh, yeah, basically one file, maybe 4,000 lines of Perl, something like that. So you, you put it on web server website, it uses the, I mean, it, it creates FAQ, basically it creates a page of FAQ, frequently asked questions, where each person, everyone, anyone can contribute, can edit part of it, you know, that's, that's what it is, you know. So that's the idea. So where does FAQ-O-Matic come from? Well, before FAQ-O-Matic, you have the concept of FAQ, which I talked about last week or two weeks ago in my video you search for Xali Netaquot okay search for Netaquot or Xali Troll on YouTube so I talked about that you know Net Netaquot Anthropology so Xal Talk Show Netaquot Anthropology so it's this one uh, Xal Talk Show 2019 October 18th Netaquot Anthropology a Troll's Confection Dead Links and Stone okay so that uh, I talk that I show you this page okay this this page is a lot of early history of the internet so anyway so FAQ so FAQ is the is the most popular concept in 1990s online it's it's uh, FAQ is similar to today's Wikipedia okay so you have tons of FAQs FAQs on piano play, playing FAQ on sadomasochism you know the sex play FAQ on C++ on C on differential on, on computational geometry on functional programming you have all these FAQs and it's like today's Wikipedia it's uh, full of information great information solid so you have FAQ and FAQ is manually written by people, you know, by editor, so-called editor. You collect, you know, great content from your forum, basically, over the years. And it's very tedious. If you are a blog writer, you know how tedious, you know, how time-consuming it is, actually, to create, to maintain, you know, a blog or a website is it's a lot of work. You have to edit, lots of edit. You have to restyle wording. You have to, you, you know, it doesn't work if you just, for, for example, if you are interested in C++, you know, it doesn't work if you just collect a snippet you saw every day. It doesn't work because then you have a page, you have a book where every pack paragraph is in entirely different context and style. <laughs> by itself it has solid information but it doesn't it doesn't work so so to write the FAQ or you know it takes tremendous amount of work you have to rewrite restyle or organize and you have to keep doing it like every day you know because it, it gets outdated fast especially when you when the document becomes long 
So FAQ is very hard to maintain. You know, typically you have uh, usually it's one single person, but often on a forum, for example, Lisp, Compland, Lisp, or Emacs, you have like two or three people, you know, regulars in that forum who collaborate, you know, manage the FAQs, but it's still tedious. So that is how someone created this FAQ Omatic, you know, page, a software. Uh, Perl in Perl, I think it's written in Perl, one, one, one file of Perl. So that, so now you have like, you, you, every one of you can just go to the website and edit, you know, on the fly, you know, edit, collaborative, you know, interactive re in real time. So instead of emailing to each other, you know, suppose we have three person, ABC, we, let's say we manage uh, keyboard FAQ, you know, mechanical keyboard FAQ. You know, you have that on Reddit too, you know, hacker, you know, Reddit R slash R mechanical keyboard. You know, you have FAQs, like what's the best mechanical keyboard? How do you, where do you buy keycaps? How do you buy artistic keycaps? You know, where buy, where to buy the, you know, the, the tools and stuff, you know, chips, you know, things like that. So, so before, in the 1990s, when you have FAQ, it's tedious. You have three person, you, maybe you email each other every day, it's tedious. But now, someone just created FAQ Omatic, you know, on a page. You know, or you, you just go to the website and edit, you know, in real time. So that is, you know, that is fantastic. That, so that's a kind of a, that's a big, you know, milestone in the wiki, in the, in the history of content management system. That's a, that's a first, that's a first, I would say. Yeah, FA, FAQ or Matic, I would, um, I would consider that's the first, the very first content management system. Uh, I wish, you know, I wish we can actually find who, cre who created that because it's a guy, FAQ or Matic, um, Okay, so maybe yeah, SourceForge. Maybe this, maybe this. I don't know. Okay, that looks familiar. I think. Okay, I think maybe this is the one. I don't know. I cannot be sure. It's original. I think that's the one. Okay, by FAQ Omatic was principally authored by John Howell. Okay, so. So this side documents the FAQ Omatic. The FAQ Omatic is a CGI CGI based system. Yes. This is back in 1999. CGI based system that automates the process of maintaining a FAQ. Yes, this is the one. So from 1998, yeah. So this is the one. This is the father of all content management systems. Okay, I'm glad I found it. <laughs> History. I haven't looked at this for 20 years. This is the one. FAQ Omatic. You know, so it's just one page. You know, you can all go ed there edit. So that's the, well, that's my story. Okay, that, that's what I want to say. So you have FAQ Omatic. Then, you know, once it's out there, then other programmers see it, you know, they can create variations you know different versions they they fork it then they create then it, it becomes wiki the the you know faq or matic maybe it's too uh one mouthful they they you know they then the wiki you know it's easier to pronounce they become wiki for some reason i don't know how exactly but anyway that's a this is the father of wiki so you have wiki then you have you know then you have wiki media you know media wiki you know and so on then you have the content management systems okay so after so at at the during the time of wiki you started to have blogs so the first you know the first one is at the time it's a uh leave journal leave journal leave journal or live journal how you, however you pronounce it live journal <laughs> that's the first one and then you have wordpress then you have uh, another one I forgot. Then after a few years, you have Blogger. Then Google bought Blogger. You have, you know, th there's, a, there's a lot of history of that. So that's about content management system. Oh, another thing I should mention is that as far as content, okay, so when you talk about content management system, 
which I would include FAQ automatic. Okay, this is the first first one. Then there's a kind of related concept about a static website generating system. Okay, I, I think that's they are kind of they are rather different. Okay, so content management system focus on creating a website where people can go and edit things. Meanwhile, the static website generator system it focuses on you know creating a website st a static website not necessarily for you know people to comment or edit basic but it's a but it's a system for creating information you know you've you know so you have several of them uh, can anyone give examples for example there's a uh, you know s many of people use ogmod plus they have a uh, hack Jackal or something, hide, hide and jackal or something, <laughs> or oct octopus something. What's the name, guys? And uh, there's, there's quite a few. Uh, and Vector or, or Victor Hugo. Yeah, Hugo is one of them. You know, s static website generation system. So what what's some of the names, guys? Static site generation. Jekyll, yes, Jekyll, Jekyll is one of them, yes, and Hugo, and uh, uh, Gatsby JS. I haven't heard of that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's one of that's some of them. So that's content static website generation system. So that's one thing. So my my Emacs, you know, system is kind of for like that static website generation system. You know, for creating a website. So you create, for example, you create your website. You write your blog in Oak Mod or Markdown. You know, which is very easy. Then you can press a button. It generates the entire structure, like footers, headers. You know, images, uh, things like that. Link. They link. You know, link. You know. Then you put it to a web uh, website. So, so that's static website generation system. Then you have the content management system. Okay, so one more thing I want to mention is that back in 1999, 1997, 1998, around that, you have another, the, I would say, the, the earliest content creation system, which is called Frontier. Does anyone know that? Frontier on the Mac. If you know, say it, okay. So check out uh, StormKit. You can easily deploy static sites. StormKit, okay. So I don't know uh, what is that. So I think maybe that's it. Uh, something that's um, anything else. How long I have I been talking? Let's see if there's any. Uh, I've been talking for one hour. Okay, so maybe that's 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 about today. So we talk about FAQ automatic content management system. Okay, then there is a static website generation system. Uh, that's not a proper term. We'll find the proper term in a minute. So we have Hugo and uh, Jekyll. For example, that's examples. So, and content management systems, let's put it here. So, content management systems, then agile and extreme programming, and uh, uh, <coughs> Sigma keyboard. Then we have agile and extreme programming, then we talked about FAQ automatic. Uh, history of content management system. Okay, then we have static website generating system. Then we have the father, the grandfather of the grandfather of of content management system is. Frontier, okay, so Frontier. Um, 
Does anyone remember? Okay, I, I this this is Frontier on a Mac. Now let me let me find it. Okay, so it's by this guy Dave Weiner. Okay, so this Dave Weiner, in my opinion, he's a crackpot. Dave Weiner, there it is. The story of Frontier. Oh, Jesus, user land indeed. That's a you know we are talking about history of uh, of uh, the internet so frontier so what I'm going to say is that frontier this is the website frontier is the father in my I would say it's the father of static website generating system I actually am expert of it because I I used it yeah I actually use it for like one year or two years I know it very well I, I you know I, I code in it this is before I started to dive into Perl and Unix frontier okay so he uh, frontier frontier the father the the dad of static website generating system by Dave Wein Weiner okay I no like the guy I think he is a crackpot okay he's a crackpot Dave Weiner he is also the guy who created RSS he invented RSS the the notion okay so we're talking about the frontier okay the father which okay so what is frontier it's a it's on the Mac. It's on, uh, originally it's on, it's Mac only, but later on they ported it, they ported it to Windows. Um, but um, okay, so you can I I guess you can read the history here. Yes, you know. So um, you know he's trying to get he's trying to sell it to Apple. You know he's trying to sell the Frontier so it replaces. Apple's Apple script, but it didn't work out. Apple didn't want it. Uh, eventually, Frontier Frontier kind of died, but anyway, he created RSS and things moved on from there. You know, so RSS picked up. Uh, so he so Dave Dave, you know Dave Weiner. He's he, you know I don't like the guy. I think he's a crackpot. He's one of the vo voodoo purveyor. You know he's like Larry War. He give you know he he tells programmers a bunch of you know crap like Unix philosophy. He's a code code formation uh, kind of people kind of guy. He's a garbage he's a fuckhead. This guy fuckhead. Dave Weiner. Now by the way I don't I don't think you know I by by no means disclaimer okay disclaimer. I don't think he's a criminal or anything like that. This is just my opinion. I don't like him. I think he's a fuckhead. Disclaimer. So anyway, so Dave Weiner, that's a guy. You know, he's a crackpot. Uh, and the uh, story of Frontier. Anyway, so uh, can we actually see a picture of Frontier somewhere? Maybe it's somewhere here. Yeah. So BB edit back then. So anyway, so this is nineteen, you know, nineteen ninety seven also. And uh, I would say Frontier is the father of content static website generating uh, creation system. Okay, so that's about that. So story of Frontier. Did did I have it here? Yeah. So okay. So let's close that. So what it does, what it do is that you, you know, just like you know today, if you are an Emac user, you use Oakmod. You know, you can have a directory of Oakmod files. You know, you you know, you don't have to learn complicated markup like you know, like this. You know, incomprehensible. You know, you simply write in a you know simple markup things like that. Uh, special, you know, for example, in Ogmod, for example, if you want to create a header, you just say something. You know, then that's a header. If you want a uh, you know s subtitle s subsection you just do that then you can uh, say hello everyone today's weather 
is good, <laughs> sunny, and uh, stuff. And I went to shopping. Okay. So you have a directory full of that. Then you press a button, it becomes HTML, and with with links, images, you know, it generates for you. So Frontier is kind of like that. But you know, right now I'm doing this in Emacs, but Frontier is kind of it has its own. It's an application. You know, today you call it an application. You know, you you anyway. So Frontier. I don't know if it still exists in some form or not. I don't know, but. Um, but that, that's a frontier, okay? So, so I think that's it for today. Dave, Dave Weiner, FAQ Omatic, uh, Netiquette history of that, uh, Xar Talk Show, FAQ Omatic. Is math important for programmers? Okay, extreme programming. Any comments? Say it now, okay? I think we're gonna close in five minutes. So, Alan says, can you contrast Wikipedia style of knowledge document? Document, documenting versus the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy style. Uh, for example, crowdsourcing versus having single author X resource source pages. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, that's a that's a big topic. Like where how where to begin with that? Um, well, I mean, if, um, I think you need both. Okay, like we have to specify, like what what exactly, what perspective perspective are we taking? In general, you need both. I mean, Wikipedia. I mean, Wikipedia. The reason it thri thrives is because anyone, like you have seven billions of people, human animals on Earth. Anyone, they can, anyone, you know, they can, they can start to edit, comment, you know. So that's, uh, you know, they, you call it, uh, you know, there's a jargon these days. You call it like since ten years ago, you call it mob wisdom, mob, you know, how they call it, mob. Um, yeah, there's a term like mob wisdom or something, or 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 some some something. You know, this which which does have some. Uh, basis because you have a lot of people you know you want to you know one thing difficult about writing is that it's like where to begin that's the that's the difficulty about writing like like for example you guys many of you maybe you are an expert at you know some language you are expert at something right you I mean uh, each, but it's difficult to write a book because like where to begin like like if you are just chatting to me immediately you can you know i ask you a question like how do you like for example i can ask you any question then you can answer right away oh oh that one you just do it this way you know and other people can ask you questions you can answer right away but it's difficult for you to write a book because <laughs> immediately you have this this war like where to begin then you have to think about what what topic you want to cover you know that that's a problem so on the other hand if you have a wiki the thing is you don't have to think anything you just start like you know like if i start a wiki you know the first page you know for example you, suppose i'm going to say i'm going to have a list uh, article about lisp history i can just say i can start to create an article history of lisp oh and and the and the entire article is just one sentence this is created by this guy in 96 1960s or something by this john something that's it this is created by this john something guy in 1960s that's it you see that's the beauty of wiki wiki because you don't have to be perfect you know you you you, you break the wall there's no wall you just begin any any minor thing like even a correction of one word of spelling mistake or a typo anything is is a little increment ad, advanced you know then someone saw so that oh then then they can you know instead of john they can find the what's his name john you know what's his name the, the guy who created uh, this you know it take, takes time like each little detail takes you know five minutes time 
to think about but if you are doing it yourself you don't have it's like a burden you know like the whole thing you have to deal with but so people start to correct misspellings perfect the grammar you know correct typos then you know then create the precise date the John guy who thought about this then someone else added you know maybe another sentence then it grow that that's how that's that's the power that's that's the heart that's why Wikipedia is successful because you have billions of people each one you you don't have war anymore I, anyone can contribute a little thing that's the power that's the beauty now of course it has flaws the flaws is that you it's not um it's not managed by expert that means often you first of all you have vandalizers like you have people who have strange opinions like me you know i go to <laughs> i go to wikipedia okay i go to wikipedia i see unix philosophy page okay <laughs> then they have a grand history how great unix philosophy is oh it's uh, you know it's created by this guy that that guy you know unix philosophy small is beautiful how this is the foundation of modern modern computing fuck you know these fuckheads so i go there i say oh i cross this out i say no this is wrong because i started to put my own opinions you know so so that is a flaw of wikipedia you know you you especially today you have you know social justice scan and you have us you know you have government they power, powerful entities they can have thousands thousands of people who try to do edit war you know to try to create to make certain articles um, you know fake news you know to be favorable to them anyway th so th so the problem with uh, with Wikipedia is there's no authority th I mean no uh, certified you know where where ec recognized ex expert to 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 put a stamp on it that's 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 kind of the flaw so on the other hand you have something like Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or you know traditionally you have the Encyclopedia Britannica where you have it's written by you know hundreds of top experts in respective fields so you have mathematicians you know focusing focusing on various uh, various categories of math you know topology analysis geometry algebra you know in history of math you have experts writing each you know uh, overseeing or et being an editor for each uh, you know hundreds of articles on those then you have historians economics you know and so on uh, and so so you really truly get expert um you know quality information truly expert you know so so one of the problem with wikipedia like even today even though in many ways it's the information and quality is far superior than any encyclopedia you know the quality or the quantity wikipedia today is in fact better than encyclopedia britannica the entire uh, encyclopedia britannica i would say okay both quality and quantity all things considered i would claim i would say it's better than encyclopedia britannica for example if i can ho only have one of them S suppose i have digital access to encyclopedia britannica entirety of it or the wikipedia i i can only have one I would today I would pick Wikipedia okay even despite all its flaws or its fake news or it's you know I, st I would still pick Wikipedia because I consider it's the quality and and quantity is better than the professional management you know the pro you know Britannica today so but anyway so the problem with with Wikipedia even today is it, the constant for many articles the content tends to be like incoherent pot shots you know like you go to wiki for especially for for topics you are not familiar with you know i'm going to assume for example i'm going to assume you don't know uh math 
you know, let's say complex analysis. Okay, so complex analysis, which is a branch of math. Okay, I let's let's assume you you know nothing about it, but you want to learn. You know, you want to learn about it. So you go to Wikipedia. You started to see like kind of this. I mean, it, it's factually correct. Okay, everything is factually it's good content. You know, quality. But however, you don't get the coherent picture of of what is it about. Like, what the fuck is it? What and you know, you want to know what the fuck is complex analysis in math. But you go to Wikipedia. You have this. You know, tons of you know, ten pages long article with hundreds of links. You don't get the picture. Like what? What? Like what are you trying to? You know, you don't get the picture. Like it talks about you know, you know, some part of it is history. Some part of it is research level things about the topic. You know, some part of it is you know, curiosity. Um, information. It's still good, you know. It's still solid information, but is that's a problem with Wikipedia? You know, you don't, you don't get, you know, you don't get, you, you don't get a coherent picture. So, you know, so in this case, so so in this case, it would help if you have some professional mathematician, you know, who oversee. You know who is kind of take responsibility as the editor of that page. Then, then things fall into you know more coherent, you know esoteric. You know, so you get first. First of all, you have a coherent introduction on what is complex analysis. Then you can have you know links to more in depth. You know, for example, complex analysis from a differential geometry point of view. You know, from geometry point of view, from algebra point of view, the history of it, or you know, notable theorems. You know, then you you have a coherent picture. So, but so as as to how do we fix it? I don't know how to fix it. You know, um, it's kind of open question. Maybe there is no no answer. You, you know how like how do you fix Wikipedia so that you you know, you you can you can maybe you can you know so you can have some kind of actual um, authority, you know, some expert you know opinions to make it more coherent. I don't know how to. I'm not sure there's a, a answer to that. So that's so that's my answer to that question. That's my opinion. So I think that's it for today. Uh, let me read the comments, and that that's it. One hour and twenty-two minutes. Okay, so comments. Uh, so my website is just a static website, and it's just created in Emacs and created in XAR Fly Keys and XAR HTML mod. And also with the help of several script in Python, in Perl, in Golan, and in Emacs Lisp, they help. For example, I have a, for example, I, for example, I have a script, and right now it's in Golan. It's also it was in Perl. Then I have a um, Golan version. You know, I I write this in several languages over the years, over the past twenty years. Uh, for example, let's go to local. So this script now it's in Golan. So this is the Golan script of uh, 220 lines. What it does is that it will so let's run it. So it will check all files in this website. So they are like uh, 3,000, 30, 30,000 files. About 10,000 are HTML files. The others are images and CSS and JavaScript and so on. So you know some thirty thousand files in this directory, and let's check all HTML or XML files. Let's run it. So if I have a bad link, like a local link that's linked to non-existent file, it'll tell me. So I'm running it. It'll it'll be done in like in one minute. You know, in thirty seconds. So I have several of these scripts to help me out. So my website is basic is basically static or static. 
uh, and there's some JavaScript some on some website. Let me show you. Uh, Xali, let's go to Unicode Arrow. Search for Unicode Arrows. This is my most popular page on my website of all my websites. Unicode Arrows. Fuck. Now these people is taking over me. So you go to Unicode Arrows. It should, my, my should be the first. It was the first. It was the first on Google search, I think. Google.com. Let's try it. Unicode arrows. Okay. Please make my first page first. Yay. Actually, you know, because I'm logged in, so Google tells me what what is this search performance for this query. Fuck Google. Clicks 766. Impressions 1.71k. This is the past seven days average position. So my website is still number one. Yay. You know, this, then this other people, they just copy. You know, they just copy your website. Then they, you know, that's what people can do on the web. So anyway, and they, anyway, so, so my website, so for example, uh, Unico, so actually, so my website is uh, static, but you have interactive. For example, if you want to find all emoji that contains the word water, you just type W A T in real time. So this is all Unicode characters that contains the word W A T in their name. So let's find something more interesting. Let's say plus, okay. I want to find all words that contains the word, all Unicode that contains the word plus. P L U S. Okay, so so apparently you have lots of incomprehensible. So cuneiform. Wait. It should show up. Uh, I don't know why is it not showing the font. Uh, this is shit. Let's go to Safari. Anyway, you, you should see it on, on your browser. I think I hope so. So my website is static website, but there's some interactivity, but that's JavaScript. That's front end. So that's it for today. Thank you for uh, guys for coming by. Uh, Sacramento, yes. Yeah, maybe I should move to Sacramento. Yeah, <laughs> that would be yes. programming thank you Alan for the super chat uh, my guys mob programming no I have not heard of that uh, Bye.